Hello, in this lecture, we're going to finish up the master budget. We're finally down to the balance sheet where we can tie everything together. So I won't go through the whole thing again. We're on the, we're on the balance sheet. We're on the last piece. This is the last piece that we need to complete. And within the balance sheet, of course, we have our assets, which we will start off with as normal assets. And we're going to start off with our cash, cash being the first asset. Now, where's the cash going to come from? It's going to come from our cash flow budget. So we're going to scroll up here and say equals. I'm going to find my cash flow. And we ended off here at this 40,000. So we got this 40,000 there. That's our ending cash from the cash flow. And the next thing we have is the accounts receivable. Now for the accounts receivable, we're going to have to do some calculation over here. We're going to go over here. I'm going to do another little side calculation. We're going to have to have the beginning receivables plus the sales on account. And then we're going to see how much we collected on those sales on account to get the ending accounts receivable. So the beginning receivables, if we scroll over here, we're going to say, where do we start off with? We go all the way up here and we say that on the balance sheet, we started off with 342, 248, 342, 248. That's where we began with. Then we had sales total. Whoop, I'm sorry about that. We got it over here. Total sales. If we scroll up to our sales budget all the way up top, sales budget. We had 1,447,200 in sales. And then they told us that 70% of those sales, I'm just going to say 70%, it's already formatted as a percentage, home tab, uh, numbers group percent over here. I'm going to go ahead and make all this bold too, just so you can see it a bit better and make it all bold. So that's the 70% are um, on credit. The rest are cash sales, so they don't affect our receivables. We got cash at the time of sale. So... We're going to say of the total sales, 1,4472 times 70% of those were on credit, meaning they increased our receivable. We didn't get cash for them. Then we're going to have the cash collected from credit sales, the stuff that we collected on the sales. So I'm going to say this equals, and I'm going to have to sum this up. I'm going to hit sum, and we're going to scroll over to where we have this budgeted. I'm going to scroll up here. We have the budgeted for the three months out. So up here we have uh, collections of receivables. So that's on july august and september if we sum those up then we get the one million one seven uh seventeen six oh eight so that means that the receivables at the end of the day this is what we started with then we had sales plus this on account those are the portion sales on account minus the fact that we collected on these these are the collections that we had on account means that we'll have an indian receivable of 337680. 337680. That is what's going to be in the receivable over here. So we have accounts receivable. And I'm going to say this number equals this 337680. Next, we're going to have the raw materials. So raw materials inventory. So we'll do a quick calculation over here as well for the raw materials inventory. We're going to start off with the Indian raw materials, what we have, and it's going to be in units. We know what we had in units. So I'm going to say this equals, we're going to scroll up to our raw materials budget up here. So we're going to scroll up to the raw materials budget. And we see this Indian budgeted inventory. We had this 4,000 right there. We're going to take that 4,000 and we're going to multiply it times 21 because the, it costs 21 per unit, $21 per unit. So there's the units, $21 per unit. Therefore, we equal the units of 4,000 that we had at the end times $21 per unit. That gives us the 84,000. So this number here, the raw materials inventory in dollars, is of course the 84,000. All right, so next thing that we are going to have is the finished goods inventory. So the finished goods inventory is going to equal, we're just going to scroll up to the cost of goods sold calculation. We have it right here. We calculated it right there. So it's a 321, 360. If you want to look how to calculate that again, you could go back to that video and check out the calculation to get to that number. Now we're going to go to the total current assets. So these are all of our current assets. So we're just going to add these up, of course. I can, we could underline it, home tab, font group, underline and then scroll over here and have this equals the sum of the 40 down to the 32160. Uh, and that'll give us our total current assets. And then, of course, the next piece that we will have is going to be equipment. So we have long-term assets. We've got equipment, property, plant, and equipment includes equipment. And the equipment's going to include what we started with. So if we scroll back over here and we take a look at where we were at at the beginning, 
we had 600,000 in equipment. So we had 600,000 and you'll recall that, that we purchased more. So I'm going to say this equals the 600,000 plus, and I'm going to say, um, that this is going to be increased. If we go to the cash budget, we can see it there that we purchased equipment for three, 130 cash. Now, of course, again, this is assuming we paid all cash for it in this problem. We did. We paid 130 cash. Therefore, we increased it to the 730. Then we have the accumulated depreciation. So we've got accumulated depreciation. And the accumulated depreciation, once again, it's going to be what we had before up here, plus the the new change that happened. So the accumulated depreciation we was before 150,000. So we're going to say, we're going to go back down here and we're going to say this equals 150,000 plus... I'm going to say the sum of, and the accumulated depreciation was that was under the uh, overhead, and it was the fixed portion. So this fixed portion of overhead, this 21 per month, that that is the depreciation. So we're going to I'm going to sum this up. We could have just picked up the 63 over here, but it's the 150,000 plus the 63,000, or the 21 plus the 21 plus uh, the 21. And there we have that. Then uh, if we have the equipment net, equipment, and we take the net value of that, meaning the equipment less the accumulated depreciation to get the book value. We can also call it the book value of the equipment. That's going to equal the 730000 minus the accumulated depreciation. Remember, the accumulated depreciation is a contra asset. Book value then of the equipment being 517000 now we can have our total assets. Total assets, we're just going to sum up the outer column.